All right, I'm ready too. All right, then in three, two. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another showcase on the Patreon server. Today, we're joined by Spike. Hey. Hi. And Iceberg, JY Social. Yeah, today we want to show and you our sand farm that we got on the Patreon server. But I thought it would be nice if we start actually at the Patreon server spawn because they got a really nice <laughs> mob switch over there. So, guess what it is? <laughs> That's of course the Schalke mob switch. Uh, they were all brought over from the end. Um, whoops, we actually have a yeah also a mechanism that lets Schalkes respawn in end cities, so they didn't have to scour a, a lot of uh, end cities. So they basically set up a farm, brought them all over here. So how many do we have here, Spike? Uh, we've got uh, one thousand and fifty. One thousand fifty. Yeah, this is enough for fifteen players. So there's no issues with, I don't know, too many people being on, mob switch not working, right? Mm -hmm. Never an issue, yeah. okay. No, 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 never. Mm -hmm. Obviously, <laughs> we're near 1,000 Schalkers, are they in minecarts as well? Yeah, it's so like yeah. 2,100 entities. Uh, MSPD isn't that great, but it's still fine. But they're, of course, in lazy chunks, so it's not really a stress on the server if nobody's really near spawn. All right, then... Next topic, pixel art. <laughs> they actually built a, a mango logo. <laughs> That's really awesome. <laughs> so the whole spawn, is this a map area as well? Do you have a map of this? Uh, yeah, we do. Okay. Maybe you can check it out. Okay, the little mango logo for the spawn. Awesome. Really good job, guys. All right, I would say then let's head over to the sand farm. You can also maybe check out the awesome Nether Hub first. I really have to say this this place looks amazing. Really good job, guys. Okay, can maybe somebody explain like the layout of the Nether Hub or what's the idea behind it? JY? Sure. So uh, the the very first uh, part of the Nether Hub here is in this small room. So when new new players arrive on the server. This is the first place they see. So this is our armory where it's running a little low at the moment, but we have all of the useful items you could want. And on this far wall for new players, there's a shulker box of gifts for people who join. Um, so we've got plenty for plenty of new players if they happen to join us. And you get there's one a really of these nice boxes. welcome gift. Look at all of that. <laughs> Even cookies. <laughs> the welcome cookies. Love it. <laughs> okay, continue. So through here we have the server's central nether hub. Uh, at the bottom center is the portal that goes to the server's central storage. Uh, we're a very collaborative kind of server, so we all use the same storage and all of our stuff is kept centrally. Um, each level of this nether hub, apart from the mezzanine kind of level in the center here, all of these other levels that you see, it's currently incomplete, but there are currently, I believe, five levels with each floor having approximately, I think, 25 piston bolt stations. Um, so we have piston bolts just about everywhere on the server. That's amazing. This, this place actually puts our server to shame. <laughs> also love the, the giant gas at the top. <laughs> really nice detail here. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that was uh, Neil's Christmas present to the server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, uh, and then let's take one of the piston bolts to the sand farm. Okay, of course, piston bolts fully decorated. Uh, Desert seam. Uh, Jai? Jai? Yep. Uh, first, go to the old uh, sand farm. Oh, of course, yeah. So we have, uh, we had earlier on in the server, quite early on, there was another first attempt at a sand farm that was built. All right, this one here. Down this piston bolt that essentially was just modeled after a desert temple. All right. I maybe we should explain real quick how a sand form on the Patreon server works. So we gave the husks uh, a custom drop just by loot table editing. Uh, they drop one to three sand, 
so without looting. Just kill this guy. Yeah. And that's not all there is to it. Um, we also gave the pyramid a special mob spawn. So in those pyramids you can usually find in the desert. Um, husks spawn exclusively and also independent of uh, skylight. So usually husks would only spawn um, if the skylight is 15, but not anymore in the pyramids. pyramids. Yeah, those pyramids farms kind of work like witch farms. So you can also have a quad pyramid seed and, and whatnot, but it's kind of unlikely to, to really find it here. Um, if I enable the bounding boxes, which unfortunately currently not works, you would see that this is in, in fact uh, a bounding box of a complete pyramid. Of course, everything was removed around here. Actually made a really nice landscape around. Is this intended like this? Um, I don't believe so. This was uh, made very early into the server before mm -hmm. we had like enough resources to make proper world eaters. So I believe enough was removed so that uh, an AFK spot would encompass the bounding box of the temple mm -hmm. and not anything on the ground. All right, because for example here this is not spawn proof, but we would just AFK here at the top, and then mobs would spawn exclusively in the the farm. All right, so let's check it out. Should I put somebody in spectator mode? It's easier to explain, or I'm um, sure. Okay. All right, then let's try to get JY. You can explain it. Okay. All right, so it's a fairly simple design. Again, this was built quite early on before we had a lot of resources. Um, so they're just multiple spawning floors, mostly made out of glazed terracotta, so that these slime block pushes can push the husks off to one side, where they very simply just drop onto magma blocks and slowly burn themselves to death. And the drops are picked up by these hopper minecarts going back and forth and packaged up with a small shulker loader. Mm -hmm. So it's a very early design, so it wasn't wasn't very complicated, but it was enough for what we needed at the time. Yeah, it's a good first start. Uh, is it still functional? Can we turn it on? Uh, it is still functional, I believe. Uh, we just have to have someone AFK in the platform up the top. And find the on-off switch. <laughs> uh, just at the top okay. on the roof. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Sweeper design. Push down. Uh, mega blocks are the ones that spawn with armor, so like normal zombies. This can also spawn with armor. Be killed by the mega blocks over time. All right, yeah, the disadvantage of this sign is obviously it's quite slow. The mob cap would be filled up rather quickly. Uh, that's why I decided just to upgrade the farm and build a, a quicker one, right? Well, what was the decision to um, make a better farm? Uh, we did a lot of scouring around of uh, on the midst and so on, and we eventually found a double, um, double temple that we could use and we could make a much more efficient farm with that. All right, let's say let's check out the new sand farm next. Just going to turn it off. Like a good Minecrafter, always turn the farm offs. I think that was mostly designed to annoy people who fly down <laughs> piston bolts. <laughs> oh, we do the same. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's check out the new sand farm. Okay, this looks much more professional. There's a complete perimeter around it. So I guess you used the world eater, right? Yep, so this was done um, a lot more recently, so we had a lot more resources. Um, so this was using a world eater, we created a, a proper full perimeter. We found uh, a place that had two uh, desert temples in close enough 
that we can load almost all of both bounding boxes at the same time. Um, I believe part of one corner of one bounding box is just outside the range. Um, but we have two temples and we used um, essentially the same as a witch farm shifting floor design. Um, the bounding box is quite large, so essentially two of the maximum sized witch farm shifting floor designs kind of mashed back to back. All right, now we can also see here the green lines. This is the outline of the bounding box of the pyramids. All right. Um so is there anything to explain about the concept? So we got the normal standard shifting floors, just going back and forth. Uh, this has the advantage that you get quite a lot of spawning spaces, not quite as much as with the um, the flying machine farm, the sweepers. But you just kill the mobs a lot quicker. So the mob cap is mostly filled, as you can see here. Um, 111 we have currently. So the farm definitely benefits from more players being online or higher mob cap. All right, uh, do you know the rates of the farm? Maybe if one player is online or, or what the full rates are of extended mob cap? Uh, so as as far as we're aware, the mob uh, with a single mob cap, with a single player, the rates are approximately 70,000 an hour. And with two mob caps, approximately 110K an hour. Um, but beyond that, we haven't done super extensive testing. So for both farms, of course, or one of yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. This the place also looks awesome here in the middle with the storage as a decoration. Um, what else is to say? I think you have a bit of an issues with a slime chunk, right? Yeah, I just uh, saw that now, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, do you miss the sand duping mechanics, or is this enough for the service needs? The sand? Um, uh, we honestly don't miss the sand duping mechanic. Mm -hmm. This has been quite interesting and, and a very nice kind of challenge to try and find a new type of farm, de uh, farm design and to take advantage of this mechanic. Uh, between that and the gravel farm that we have on the server as well, uh, we haven't ha really had any need to dupe anything other than dragon eggs on the server, and that's been quite nice. We've enjoyed um, mm -hmm. yeah, concepting new farms and whatnot. It's been quite fun. Did you also try to maybe make a more efficient farm? I could imagine this is not the maximum we can get because it wastes some spawning spaces or is like, this like the, the best of all is quite efficient, lag friendly. Did you try to make an even faster one? Um, I believe Tim was most uh, the, the one most in charge of, of the technical design, um, but he's currently AFK. So right. uh, as, as far as I can see, um, this is more than we we could possibly need at the moment. So I AFK'd this farm, I think, overnight for probably 13 or 14 hours. And we have in excess of probably 700,000 sand. So I, I can't see us needing too much more efficiency than that. But mm. trying to find more efficiency could be a fun challenge. Yeah. Yeah, I guess then this farm together with the gravel farm also supplies with all the concrete you'll need. Also need don't need to do the concrete duping. Um, the only issue is probably just converting the concrete powder into to concrete, right? Um, we have a spot where we do that as well. We have a, a concrete MBT swapper and and concrete converter um, out near our central storage. Mm -hmm. We can go and have a look at that if you like. Yeah, we can also maybe check that out. Yeah. And so it's just really nice that it can. Just really adding some simple game mechanics, you could supply a uh, really a large server also with sand, uh, gravel, and concrete part of some really interesting mechanics. I think this show server really shows it. Of course, <laughs> Mojang also now added a renewable set lately uh, with the Wandering Trader. Unfortunately, no renewable uh, gravel yet. But to be honest, this mechanic with the Wandering Trader would never be sufficient to, I don't know, apart from being interesting addition to Skyblock, I think you did the math, you can get like a stack of sand every 100 hours if you would try to rely on the Wandering Trader. So we definitely need a feature like this one here that, that yeah can supply a larger server, sufficient amount. All right, so let's wait for JY. Is this portal spike? Uh, yes. Okay. This is the um, quickest way, yeah? Yeah, this is the quickest one.
Oh, that also looks lovely. Concrete factory, nice. So this is our uh, concrete converter and NBT swapper. This uh, building was designed by a, a recent member that joined the server named Datfen. Her designs are fantastic. She did a lot of the design for the upper floors of the Nether Hub as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it looks pretty much like a factory. It even has a concrete truck out the front. Oh but, yeah, um, this looks awesome. <laughs> really good job. Wow, yeah. Awesome, awesome detail. Yeah. So at the front here, we have all the different colors that you could possibly want. Wait, I lost you. Oh, oh, so yeah. just out okay. the front here, the truck. Yeah. So at the front, we have the selector panel for whichever color that you would like to choose. Uh, and at the side here, we have a selector. If you don't want converted concrete, you just want a different colored powder. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we have a double skeleton sp uh, spawner for, for bones, for bone meal. And we use that along with the concrete and sand from the two farms to create concrete powder. Uh, then put boxes of shulkers of concrete powder in the top here, and they are then emptied to the player into this dropper here. You fire this lever and concrete, we don't actually have any in the system right now, but it is fired up from the ground there. And you just stand here and place it against the other concrete powder. All right. Yeah, we didn't prepare anything because we didn't <laughs> really anticipate that we would show this off. Uh, should we maybe get some? Okay, so you deposit your shulker of concrete powder at the top. It's then placed here on a standard shulker unloader. And then the powder is brought to you. So if I turn this on, I should start receiving powder. Yep. And you just place it against this piston. Oh, this, uh, sorry, piece of powder. Mm -hmm. And then uh, using standard 1.12 NBT swapping, the, um, the powder is converted to whichever color you've selected at the front. And it's then passed through a water source and then into a blast chamber where it's, where it's collected. Yep, so powder falls down, here is converted into concrete. And then here is the blast chamber where we push it in and every using 210 blocks. Uh, we got the TNT duper here, blows up all of the the concrete blocks. Uh, it's not 100% lossless, but yeah, it's really close to being 100%. Yeah. So the items are not collected here at the bottom. Probably go up my item elevator and I'll put in the storage. So it's a really awesome system. You can also AFK here and, and it's yeah, how you get your concrete. Also, I really love this place. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, maybe I should explain that real quick. So we got here in the back is the... This is only possible in Microphone Point 12 and below. You can basically change the color um, of the concrete powder. As we saw, you put in the, the white one and it switched to black. The system even has, has a switch, so you can automatically switch in between, which we explained earlier. So we just drop down the concrete powder um, which is stored here into basically the cartridge, which is basically the yeah the color we want. All right. Yeah, awesome that we also showed this part as well. I'm trying to find the guys again. Wait, right? quickly go spectator mode. So in the center of the All right. concrete factory. Okay, then. Thanks a lot for, for showing this in the little Patreon server tour. Really interesting mechanics. Unfortunately, the concrete uh, factory will be broken if you would ever update, but there's also no plans currently. You're still content with the 112, right? Very much so. Okay. So we're definitely going to stick around in 112 a little bit. So we have all those awesome mechanics. There's, there's actually more to do in 112 than in 1.13, in my opinion. So we'll stick with that. Yeah, thanks again, Spike and JY, for showing me around and yeah, showing yeah, sure. these awesome farms. See you maybe in the no next problem. server tour. We can, I think the next tour we could maybe show the, the Schalke farm. Okay, yeah, sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. See you, bye-bye.